Hello everyone and welcome to another amazing episode of The Joy of Being for busy working mums and women in business and beyond who are seeking to unplug from their worries and overwhelm to light up with insights and joy. I am Marina Pierce and your host, mum and effortless lifestyle coach. On this week's episode, we're doing things slightly differently. Welcome to the guest episode where I support a special and busy mum in business and beyond to get insight into an area of her life that she feels stuck in. And today I've got some amazing news. You can now pre-order your very own version of the Joy of Being book, supporting hardworking mums to stress less and live more. If you're the type of mum who is struggling with the burdens of motherhood or modern day life, then this will be a perfect book for you. If you're curious, you want to know more and you want to see what's up with that book, you can do so at www.marinapearson.com slash order. And there you'll find all the amazing goodies that you'll get if you pre-order the book before the 10th of May. And on today's show, I get to have a beautiful conversation with Monica Kleosaki. And as you know, it's a guest show today for coaching and she wanted to explore this whole thing around getting frustrated uh, with not advancing on her projects as quickly as she wanted to based on the fact that she's a mum. We started with family life would get in the way of her projects and it quickly turned into an exploration of what the rush was to finish those projects. We also talked about how It's not that we can all decide to not do anything for a while, but the challenge that we all have is seeing where we're judging ourselves for that. We also talked about her birthing her book and how she's been wanting to birth this for ages and the frustration she felt around it and saw that, in fact, she doesn't need to get frustrated it can actually be the process of creation can be something that's really enjoyful and luscious. She was also reminded of the true nature that we all are and that can be kindness in the process of creativity that we don't need to keep beating ourselves up about where, when it has to get done or, you know, meeting a timeline that it actually can be something that's soft and gentle and lush. Cause after all, if we're creating, it's cause we want to. And then we spoke about what's possible when we are not striving, what's possible when we are in the present moment and in flow. The question isn't how can we have more flow? The question is how can we spend more of our time there? And so we explored that a little bit more. And by the end of the conversation, I could see that there had been a little cloud that had lifted And we shall see, the proof is always in the pudding as to what happens after the call. And uh, so she'll be sharing with me in a couple of weeks' time where she is and what happened as a result. And I'll keep you tuned. But until then, enjoy. So welcome, everybody. And today I have uh, the beautiful Monica, all the way from Tel Aviv, right? Yes, hello. Um, as you know, this is a special session uh, where we get to explore with the mama around a particular area that she wants to get more clarity on, more joy in, or more flow in. So welcome, Monica. Hi, hello. I'm so glad to be here with you. I'm so glad to be here with you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, my name is Monica Kleosaki. I'm a creative director and brand strategist. I basically right now, I help women captivate and nurture their creativity, you know, at the same time through visual storytelling for their business. So I'm the founder of the Self Magic Coaching Method. And also I'm the author of the Saki Saki Tarot for the Artist in Each of Us. So it's kind of... You know, things are kind of, you know, from <laughs> they sound like different things from different places, but at the end, they're all, you know, the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for those of you that obviously you can't see her background, but it's <laughs> full of Lego figures and color and superheroes. And These are my, my Lego goddesses. You know, they're, they're, goddesses. they're goddesses. They're not just superheroes. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's got Lego goddesses on the back there. That It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Every- 
come and play. Yeah, yeah, I want to have a background like that. <laughs> Monica, when I re- you know, it reached out, what is it that you would love to focus on today and get more clarity on? More okay. Doing, more flowing. You know, I met you like a few days ago in a mastermind and I remember you started talking and you said something about, yeah, I took some time off. I just went to see where my spark is. Something like that. I don't, you know, I don't remember there was the exact sentence. And I was like, oh, yes, 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 yes. And then I looked the name of your podcast and I saw, you know, the joy of uh, being and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm the joy of creating. I love this. I love this. (laughs) And then I saw you had also this... um, and this line at the end, I listened to one of the posts and you said, you know, that you are the joy you seek, right? Is that, is that, is that, is, are these your words? Yeah. And that also really, really, really resonates with me because what I usually use is what you create creates you, which is kind of similar in, in many ways. And I've, I've had this, I'll call it challenge, you know, I don't, probably there are other words for it, of me really listening to myself and really going for those things that I've already discovered are important and I really want to do and I really want to dedicate dedicate my time into. And uh, these are also, of course, have to do with my business because with me, my work and, you know, my creative life are kind of the same. This is actually one of the things that I preach. But then the home life sometimes just uh, seems to <laughs> get in the way. <laughs> and it's interesting because I'm, I'm writing a book right now that has to do a lot about identity. So by writing this book, I had the um, opportunity to look at my own identities. And one thing I realized is that I've been resisting the mother identity in me. And while I was resisting the mother identity in me, I was so mother on. <laughs> You know, like I I didn't act like I'm resisting it. First of all, you know, I'm first of all, mom, I don't think we ever had a babysitter. You know, I, uh, the kids come home every day from school. I make them lunch. I spend time with them. Like I'm not the absent mom. I'm the very, um, like the next step would be homeschooling, you know, so... (laughs) So I'm very present and very active as a mom, but I have been, it has been hard for me to like, like I want to, my my creative side is is what I wanted always like to expand. And at some point that has created a little friction to say the least, because when things, you know, so that that's that's an area there. So the, a few clarification points for me, yeah. because I haven't yeah. quite understood a couple of things. The first thing okay. is this: well, first of all, it gets in the way. Yeah, so are you saying that what what gets in the way of what? I, I see. Okay, a good question. You know, like I have a plan to work on my business, to write my book, to do right. my whatever, and then and then there are the I call them the practical necessities that get in the way that suddenly I have to get off my chair and drive someone somewhere okay and then there are the emotional things that get in the way that you know something is is happening and that completely steers me off my my course as a creative or I feel that you know although let's say I know what I want to do for my business and believe me that has not been an easy place to, to to arrive you know like that also took me it wasn't easy. So now like, let's say I know what to do for my business. I know what my projects are. And then I feel that all the time they have to be delayed or, you know, take the back seat. I can't really dedicate myself there. And it's amazing because my kids are not that young anymore. Like I thought that, you know, the older they get, at least I'll have a little more time. So my son is nine and a half and my daughter is eight. Like they're, they're not two or three or four, you know, so in some in some way, it was easier when they were younger. Now I realize. <laughs> what I hear is, is you've got all of these projects going on. All yeah. All these projects that you want to create. And then you've got the reality of being a mom. Yeah. Which is picking them up, taking them here. Um, you know, kids get sick, then, then you have to spend time with them. So if it looks to you and your reality right now, it looks to you like that part of your life gets in the way of your projects. Have I understood that correctly? So yeah, far? yeah, I think so. Okay. And I'm just curious as to why that's a problem for you. That they get in the way? Yeah. Really? Mm, interesting question. I don't know what to answer. I think it's clear, like, what, because I don't, I want to achieve some things and I'm not achieving them right now. That, but, but is that an answer? That the answer yeah, you were sure. looking for? So, so I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Okay. What I hear in, in this is it's a problem. So therefore it bothers you. Correct? Yeah. 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 Right. 
So um, I have projects that I want to get on with, and I also have a son when he comes back from his his. How old is he? He's four. And I, oh, I okay. But what I've noticed is that whereas before it used to be a problem, it's no longer a problem. There's an acceptance that that's just the way it is. Yeah. So the 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 amount of emotional stuff that used to come up for me, which is like, oh, for fuck's sake, I need to get this done. I'm so frustrated that it's not getting done. The deadline's here. It's actually no longer a problem. As in, oh, well, okay, it'll get done at some point or it will get done at this point or it will get done at this point. What I realized was is what was actually really getting in the way and what the problem was, wasn't the problem. I thought the problem was basically Leo, mama time getting in the way of my projects but actually what I realized was uh, me feeling the frustration. That was the problem because now uh-huh. I don't feel the frustration anymore. And so it's more like flow. It's more like the frustration is what was cre- looked to me like it was the problem because the frustration was there. So it's like you're saying, let's say you don't like heat and it's very hot. So the problem is not that it's very hot. It's just how you're organized around it and how you see it. Like exactly. you can also not, not care about the weather. <laughs> right, exactly. And so it's a little bit like... Right, you, you, cannot, you, you can do it without focusing on the weather at all, you know. So it's hot, fine, you know. It's always either hot or cold or really nice, right? Like, right. These are the options. <laughs> so who creates those deadlines? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Mm, I hear you. I remember a friend of mine, he wrote, wrote a really funny post and it really resonated, which is, so we create these goals, right? <laughs> create these goals and we, we say, okay, I want to get this done by this point. And then we get really upset and really frustrated that we don't either get the outcome or that we don't actually make the goal. And then his reflection was, well, interestingly enough, that thing, the goal is made up, the timing of the goal is made up, and then you decide that you're going to beat yourself up about something that you made up. It makes absolutely no sense. And so I laugh because I realized that that's exactly what I was up to. (laughs) Just as you set the goal or the time or the, that sense of urgency right? That sense of urgency has to get done now. That's just thought arising in the moment. It doesn't actually mean it needs to get done right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you know, it's interesting. I set a very ambitious goal at the beginning of the year to finish my book in 90 days. Um, 90 days are over in 10 days. <laughs> Believe me, this book is not, not, not near completion. <laughs> And uh, one of the reasons actually it's not completed is not because of, you know, my family. It's actually because I started doing um, some other things, which I chose to do. They weren't even uh, shoved into me. You know, I chose to do. So I'm also very okay about the book being delayed. I'm not, I'm not punishing myself about it. I'm just, but actually at the beginning of, the, of this goal setting, it was good because I would check with myself, have I done something about it every day? You know, even if I wasn't writing about it, we were just thinking about it or putting down a note to myself, you know, just, I was just in the, in this creation mode. I don't know if my thing is so much about deadlines. I think that in general, I have a very big ambition to create a certain body of work. And since I became a mom, that has significantly slowed down. And for many years, I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. There was also many years that I didn't do any creative work, you know, no business, like nothing. So I totally dedicated. I also became a man late, you know, so I was really ready for it. It wasn't something that, you know, I was really ready for it. So I, I, you know, I gave all the time and my, my kids stayed at home with me till, you know, my son till a year and three months, my daughter did a year and seven months. So it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, but at some point, I think, you know, when you get a little older, <laughs> you start to get this, will I make it? <laughs> mm. So so that is something I think that has to do with, with this. Like, I don't, I don't blame them. You know what I mean? I don't blame them. No, of course not. Like, that's not what I was hearing. What I was yeah. hearing was, is there was seen to be a little bit of urgency. Yeah. Well, there seemed to be a little bit of like, I need to get this done. Um, that's what I was hearing. It wasn't a question of, of, of whether you blame them or not. It was more like, more like that. 
And so my question that showed up when you were talking was, what's the rush? I, I hear you. And I was just asking myself like another question with this, like, what if it doesn't happen? What does that mean? You know, which is kind of, you know. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> Combined with your question. No, no, no. I, I like your question better. Tell oh, me. You like that question better. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's like you get a 10 point question. That one's definitely a tenner. Mm, I think there is a self-worth piece here. Mm. That's what I feel. That unless I'm going to... What? Tell me more about that. Yeah. That I guess I'm going to really like achieve the things I want to achieve. It's like I haven't, you know, I haven't done it yet. And uh, like I won't have what to show for or... um, you know, things like that, you know, for example, you know, this method of mine, I've been working on it on five years, but actually it was very hard for me to articulate the message around it. Hmm. So, so I decided I'm just going to write a book <laughs> because, <laughs> because that will really clarify what it is and what it's for and what you can do with it. And, um, so it's like giving labor, you know? So at some point, at some point you're getting into the birth canal Mm -hmm. and that's not, there is so much time you can be in the birth canal, Mm -hmm. you know? Also when it comes to the creative process, and I'm sure you have experienced that usually when you get to around 70, 75, 80, sometimes percent of the, of the work of a certain, you know, load project you feel a lot of resistance Mm -hmm. you feel either you want to go back and start from scratch or you know it will never end it will never finish it's no good you want to you know throw it out of the window right there's always there's always this thing this is like universal and this is and you know when it comes to bringing something to life either it's a child or a creative you know product there, there comes this this is like the birth canal when you have all that resistance you're in the birth canal is like you know the the tight before of the light and <laughs> before the tunnel so i just feel i'm there hmm. so i can't stay there for too long like the, like that's not a place to i don't have space there to swim around in the womb you know hmm. If I'm the baby, right? If my creative project is a baby, I'm the baby. It doesn't have that space anymore. It's already tight. Mm. So it's painful. It's painful and it's um, it's like the creative process is asking to complete itself. Get it. So like there's a creative tension there. Yes. Yes. Mm. That, is, is, that is screaming that, you know... Uh, I can understand other times that like, you know, it's okay. What's the rush? It can be tomorrow. It can be in a month. It can be in two years. It's fine. For example, I want to write a memoir. I said, I'm going to start writing when I'll be 50. Maybe I'll start, maybe not, but there's no, it's fine. You know, this can also write it when I'm 60, you know, like there's no, it's there, you know, but not everything is there. So there's a sense, so there's a sense that, and I get it because and I, I don't know if, if this is what it, it, it looks like to you, but I, I spent four years writing this next book, which is now going to be um, published in April. And I What's the name of it? The Joy of Being. Oh, hello. <laughs> the boy comes restless and live more, right? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. To, to I didn't know. Here. I didn't know. So no, much. sure, of course. Um, <laughs> So, so I had moments where it was like, I need to get it done. And then I would put it to one side and it would sit there and it would stare at me. And then I'd be like, oh crap, I've got to get this done. And then I would forget about it. And then I would come back to it. It was like every year I'd come back to it. And then last year, there was a reason why there was like an incentive for me to get it done. So I'm going to this event in April and I really wanted my book done by then because it's a conference for mums. And it was like, well, that's a great incentive. 
Like that, that, that is the reason why then I'm going to be finishing this bugger. And I did, but it literally, what happened was, is just as you said, it's in the birth canal and it had been there for a while, but I just said, okay, I want to birth. I want to birth this book. I want to birth this baby. It has to be my primary focus. That's the case. Then everything, obviously, aside from going to pick up my son and being a mom, has to. Co- this has to come first. I have to put all of my other projects to one side, and this is what I have to focus on. And so often it's not a question of time. Often it's a question of priority and making that the priority. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. And, and I'm told you the, the fact that now I'm doing some other things because I decided, you know, like I did, a, I created a training and I'm, you know, I, I soft launch a program and, you know, so it's, it's, it's fine. It's all related, but, but it's fine. I accepted it because I know why I decided to do some other things before, you know, I finished the book. Also, it will help, I think, with the book. But, you know, what we're talking about, before, you know, but the thing is not just the book, is that this general, um, um, you know, this general feeling mm. of, of tension that, um, and, and I think it has to do with self-worth. You know, the more we talk about it now, the more I'm, you know, I'm convinced that this is, this is where it goes to. So tell me a little you know, bit more about this sense of tension. Is it, does it, is it, is it with you every day? Um, I, there were the last few years I had it much more. Now I'm in a, now I actually feel much better about it. Like I'm in a, I'm in a good place because I have clarity about what I'm doing, but there has been times that I wasn't so sure what I'm doing. And that, that tension was not good at all. Hmm. Um, Look, also, and it has, as I told you, what I, what my preaching is about, especially when it comes to business and, you know, branding and all stuff, my idea, the way I want to see things is that my, my creative life is my brand and my brand is my creative life. Hmm. So uh, this is the kind of business I want to have. You know, I, I know it's not what everybody wants, but it's what I want to have. So, so if you see my Legos here around me, uh, I really enjoy making them. You know, I distress with them. I It's like a creative outlet for me. It brings me joy. It gives me sometimes a break through the day. But also I have something that is like um, signature. You know, it's, it, not everybody has that. Not everybody has these goddesses. Not everybody plays with Legos. So this is something that identifies me and my presence. And, um, and, and to me, this is how, you know, this is how things work. So I think that... Um, you know, the internet is a big comparison. It is uh, a <laughs> boiling pot, you know, and the, and everybody also said, right, they say, don't compare your, uh, let's say, f- uh, first uh, year in business with someone's 10th, right, or something like that, or don't, you know, don't compare everything you know about your business with what other people show you on their Facebook ads, right? Like it's not, it's not, it's never what you think. Well, conversations don't need to stay on topic. They can go wherever they want. That's true. That's true. That's true. Anyway, anyways, I think what I was trying to say is that sometimes I feel that my creative life is not enough of it, you know? Like sometimes I'm a really good demonstrator of that and sometimes I'm not at all. But one of the things that I've also realized is that it can't always be like that. Like there's always the ebb and the flow. Like sometimes there will be more of it and sometimes there will be less of it. And you can't just be on some track forever. You know, you can eat healthy for a long time and then suddenly you're getting off that wagon. You know, you can exercise for a long time and then suddenly, you know, you stop because whatever. You can have a very creative thing and then suddenly things happen and you're not feeling it or you don't want it or you don't have time for it or you're something else, disaster c- c- happens and, you know, you're immersed in it, you know. So I really think it's that acceptance of um, the stages all the time together. You know, and it's funny, they, they say we, we teach what we have to learn, right? 
<laughs> nothing can be more true than that. So, you know, my, 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 my creative coaching is about revealing yourself. So it's about revealing yourself one color at a time. I have a process that takes you through colors and in each color you're revealing, a, you know, a different thing. So this is exactly it also, you know, so the colors that it's your wow and the colors that it's not your wow. And they all work together and they all, they're all there. You do. Nothing is monochromatic. And ideas come when they come and they, they don't really have a set time. You know, last year I birthed this podcast and that's all I did for the year. I didn't do any other project. And the year before that, I didn't really give birth to anything. And it was very interesting um, because at the time I was emotionally, well, I was going through a divorce and oh, I'm sorry. just kind of landing in this new life of what it meant to be kind of part-time single mom. I, uh, on reflection now, I look back at that and I realized like I'm, I'm usually birthing lots of stuff and, um, I realized actually I've been in a bit of a holding pattern for the last two years. And I was like, actually, that's okay. Like I really saw that sometimes there are other things that need, need taking attention. care of, right. And that need your attention, especially as a mama. And I, I think we give ourselves way too much of a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can relate with that. <laughs> But we like go, no, 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 now this and now that and more of this and more of that. And that's all great, especially because we are creative beings. We are creative beings. We give birth to life. That's the ultimate of, of, of creativity. Um, but the thing is, is sometimes those amazing ideas, they're not ready to be birthed in that moment. So they just need to be parked somewhere and go, great, love that. And so I don't know if that your experience has been similar, but my used to be, oh, I have to birth this now. And now when I get an idea, it's like, give it space, give it time, give it, give it, give it, give it a sense of, um, ah. so for example, I was going to launch my, my book on Mother's Day in the UK on Amazon, right? That was the thing we were going to do. And it was all rushing, rush, 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 rush. And I said, no, we're not doing it. I'm sorry. Because my priority now was very much like not to get it out, not like an emergency C-section, right? Oh, but, yeah. But to actually, I want to enjoy the process. Like to me, like I hated giving birth, by the way. Like I fucking hated it. But I wish I'd loved it because the whole, it's the whole process of it. And so there are moments when we get frustrated and we don't love it, but giving it space and conscious space, you know, rather than this kind of go, yeah, we have to rush because I've like, so I've seen that there's an ebb and there's a flow of creativity. There's an, there's, but there's definitely a priority for me, which is now to just enjoy the process as opposed to going, now I have to get through it <laughs> and, and I have to give birth now or, oh, for fuck's sake, I, I, I you know, I, it, it has to come in the next. And so it's more of a, a kindness that's sort of shown up around the creative process, whereas before it was very strict. I don't, I don't know if this is making any sense. Yeah, it is. You know, and as you were talking... I love this sentence, by the way, the kindness of the creative process. I think it's a beautiful uh, title. <laughs> <laughs> Writing it down. You can write it down. Yeah. It's actually, you know, something I've, there are some days I managed to remind that to myself and other days, you know, less. One of the things that I was thinking also as you were talking is that more of the beginning of, you know, what you just said now that. I think we need more permission when we don't, when, we, we're, when we're not actively creating and birthing, when it's one of those things that they need to sit a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think we need more permission to let it sit, not, not to be, not to, not to have it sit just by me. To, you have to sit on the shelf, you know, more far from me, not, not me looking at it every day and saying, look at it. Oh, yeah, I have to do it. Oh, yeah, I have to do it. Oh, yeah. You know, like, like to really put it on the shelf there, you know, that I know where it is, you know, one, one step away from me. But I don't see it every day unless I, I go and pick it up. And it doesn't mean I closed it. It doesn't mean I killed it. It doesn't mean I forgot, you know, forgot about it. It's just there. Because right now I want to give myself permission to not do anything or to do something else. And, you know, it, it's like, do, do you have 
Like, are all your tabs open, you know, of Scrivener and of the web, the WordPress and of Facebook, and of <laughs> right? If you don't close them, it means you're just about ready to go back to them. Mm. And that's when we don't give that permission. And yeah, I agree with you that, you know, that we have to be more kind. Um, I think the creative process is, I, th- I find it the, more fas- the most fascinating thing. Mm. And, um, and how we are with it. I also think, you know, do you know any artist, any creative, that they will always kind with their creative process? We're human beings, my love. So, no. <laughs> So, you know, so I think there is, there is, there is the creative process of the creative process. So what I see is that we have moments where we go into our heads and, and we go into our insecurities and then we come back down to center again into our, uh, into our heart. And then we go back into our heads again and then back into our heart. It's like breathing. We, we, now we see it. Now we don't. Now we see the illusion. Now we don't see it anymore. Now we don't see, see it. We see it. So this is a constant. Um, and so there are moments where we are in flow. There are moments and that's our innate state, as you probably know, because you work with creative process all the time and it's, you're going to be, you're writing a book on it, <laughs> but our innate state is that one of flow. Um, the question isn't how can I have more of it? The question is how can I stay longer in it? Because we have to say that again. Say the, that question, again. the question isn't um, how can I have more of it? The question is how can I stay in it more of the time? Because it's not like you have to acquire more. It's the fact that you can actually be in it more as in yeah. present, as in presence of mind as in the state of meditation, as in our true being, our true self. Yeah. And so that really comes back down to one simple thing, which is stillness, which is um, peace of mind, which is um, being in that that sort of some... some I, 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 I heard it said recently, which I really like, it's functionally stoned where you are. Um, it feels like you smoked a few joints. I don't know if you've ever. Oh, done. that you mean stoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that sort of stoned, right? You, it, 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 it sort of, but you're functionally. What was the other word before stoned? Functionally? functionally stoned. So you function, but you're in that nice. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you're in that nice feeling. And so the cool thing is, is that's actually who we really are. All the other stuff, the, the resistance, the yeah. security, the urgency, the, the, the I need to do this to feel significant, all of that, that's all ego, that's all resistance, that's all the, 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 the monkey mind or the thinking. And Tell the- me, where does drifting go in here? That has been a complaint I had for a long time, drifting. What does drifting mean to you? It doesn't mean that I'm enjoying myself because I wasn't enjoying myself. I just felt I'm not focused. Mm. I'm not doing anything or I'm doing, I'm, I'm wasting my time on things that, you know, they just take up my time without being meaningful, without giving me anything in return. Mm. And also it meant that I'm going around with no plan, mm. no goal. And also my desire wasn't clear. Mm. Well, no, it's not. It's not exploration. Believe me, exploration is uh, you're curious. You are, you know, open. That was. I was just drifting. Is like off the track, treading water, that kind of thing. Well, my guess this is, is my biggest fear. This drifting. Right. Like I don't... Right. My guess is <laughs> lovely that you're a super motivated, ambitious woman. Okay. That's kind of, you're, you're a type A type of woman whereby, you know, we are and we want to get shit done in the world and we want to express ourselves and we, and we want to be out there making a difference. So this drifting thing is our, like, we could be considered to be the worst nightmare ever for us, right? Like, <laughs> it, it's like, 
ah, ah, because we are so used to not drifting. We are so used to getting in the driving seat and knowing exactly where we're going and basically getting there at 100 miles an hour. Our job in this lifetime, as far as I can tell, is to learn to enjoy the drift, is to learn to enjoy, hey, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to go down this road and have a, have a look. Oh, look, there's a nice pub. We're going to have some food there. But that's exploration. That's drifting. See, interesting. Drifting to yes. me may have a different connotation to you, but drifting um, is this is sort of, you could have seen it as drifting, me deciding to not do anything for a year. I wasn't really doing right. Oh, but, but you decided. This is what we said before, to put the book on the shelf there. Mm. This is, you decided. You're taking a year. You don't have any expectations of yourself. Right. So there's a difference there for you. Th this is different. This is, I'm take, this is exactly giving the permission. Mm. I'm putting this on the side. You know, I'm off social media. I'm stop sending newsletters. I'm doing that or not doing that. And I have no blame, no self-punishment. So this is different. No, no check, no, no, you know, none of that. I'm so not talking about that. So what drifting means to you is what then exactly? Um, what does it look like to you? What would you it, be doing if you called it drifting? It means, it means I'm not making up my mind. I'm, I'm in a yo-yo of uh, decision making. Uh-huh. Okay. You know, like I want to launch something and I don't know if to launch this or that by, by, by March and then it's April and then it's May. Mm -hmm. and then it's June and then it's uh, October and I, and I didn't launch anything all year. Okay. This is drifting for me. Uh -huh. So indecision. Indecision is a big thing. It has to do of course with doubt. It has to do with uh, thinking about things and not really taking action. Um, it has to do with, uh, you know, wanting to do all sorts of things and not really, um, you know, so at the end of the uh, at the end of the day or at the end of the year or you know, you, I didn't give myself the permission. You know, like uh, I spent a lot of time like j really being in this yo-yo thing that didn't get me anywhere besides exhaust me. And it wasn't an exploration. It wasn't like uh, giving myself time to whatever to feel the spark. <laughs> so. Usually when, so what, what I'm hearing is, is that there was a lot of judgment on that. There was a lot of judgment on, on that behavior and it was the judgment that might've been a little bit exhausting as opposed to what you were not up to. Oh, I see. So it's again, like the weather you're saying. Yeah. It wasn't what I was doing that was so bad. It was how I was looking at it. Bingo. My judgment. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So Eckhart Tolle sat, I think he sat on a bench for a year every day. He, that, that, that was his finest bit of work. And that from that came everything. So I remember my mentor saying to me, he said one, one year, he said, Marina, maybe you just decided you want to go sit on a bench for a year. And I thought he was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? He said, well, maybe you want to do, maybe you want to go and do that then. There is so, in our society today, there is so much pressure to achieve. There is so much like, what are you up to? What are you doing? Um, you know, and I remember having a conversation with another mentor of mine. She said, today is your day to disappoint people. You're just telling them, you know, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> What do you mean? I'm no, I'm not working. I'm just, you know, <laughs> hanging out. I'm watching Netflix. I'm cooking. I'm, what do you mean? And she's like, disappoint people because people want to know what you're up to. And then you say, I'm up to nothing. They're like, really disappointed. <laughs> I love that. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you working on? Nothing. nothing. Projects, nothing. nothing. Yeah, I'm just I'm watching TV. Deeply uncomfortable for most of us. For, that, for most of us who have massive judgments on those sorts of things. So which is why I decided that I was going to do exactly that. 
that I was going to do nothing because it was deeply uncomfortable for me to do that very thing. And so I didn't do anything. Did that also push you financially? So I... Yeah, because uh, that's a piece of it. Yeah. Like, no, of course, of course. That's a piece of it. Of course. So I had money behind me so that, you know, people were like, well, but I can't do that. Anybody listening go, well, I can't do that. I don't have yeah. money. True. But here's the thing. You don't need to take a year out of doing nothing to kind of um, get comfortable with not doing anything. You can do it in small increments. You can do it like maybe an hour where you're not doing anything. Maybe yeah. two hours where you're not doing anything. Maybe because what I've seen is this in the moments where I'm not actively doing or in the moments where I'm not actively working on my business, when I'm just doing something completely different or I'm just chilling, I usually get some really great ideas because wisdom doesn't show up when you're attempting to figure something out. It shows up when, you're, well, when you have a relaxed mind. So the relaxed mind, as far as I can tell, is... A oh, really, it's the best mind, yeah. The best mind, that. right? It's the best mind. It's the, the mind that we function really well from, optimally, I would say. Yeah, so the I agree. The question is, how can we spend more time in that mind? Because if, it's that, if that's the case, if we function really well there, then that's all we really need to kind of consider as to what we're up to and what we're doing. Yes, for some people, it's super important. They're on a mission. They're going to go over there. But, but I also ascribe the, to the idea of what about giving you space? What about that time to just sit there and not do anything? That's just as important it's just as important. And you get more done. You're more focused. You have more clarity. You know, before the weather was bad, like winter, you know, like, so as of um, November, yeah, you know, because here, when it's hot here, it's also bad weather for me. <laughs> you know, so everybody, so they're happy regardless their own of definition with the weather. Wow. Suddenly weather is a big thing in this conversation. I never talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> never so from november till i think january when it was starting to get chilly and it was you know wet and i would go so much to the beach mm. i would spend two days two hours a day in at the beach mm. some of it was walking some on, some of it was just sitting mm. Beautiful. And, you know, reading a book or just having my coffee, writing in my little notebook or something, you know, just totally, totally chilling. And it was, it was really amazing. I'm actually, you know, soon it's going to be nice, nicer and warm. So there's going to be like a month or so or two, maybe that I can go back to that before I'm going to eight years <laughs> unbearable. Yeah, you know, we just have to remind ourselves these things, I think. But I, I, I really like what you said about the judgment and the drifting. I never thought about it like that. Because there are people that drift and they don't, they're fine. Like, they're like, oh, I'm just, you know, and there are other people who are, like, it used to drive me nuts when I met people that weren't ambitious. I was like, oh, my God. And now what I realize is there's something really beautiful in that. They're able to enjoy the moment much more because they're not thinking about, being somewhere else than that, than, than they're not. In other words, when we're striving and wanting to achieve, we're not here in this moment. We're saying, I don't want to be here right now. I don't have enough. Like I'm not enough. Like I want to be over there doing something else because somehow that's better than where I am right now. And that's just not the case, right? Because when you are in the present moment, there's nothing that you need. There's nothing that, that, that the, the, future can give you that you don't already have you know i have this childhood friend that she she she, she went to university she, she you know i don't want to say details she, she, she's a professional and the minute she finished her you know studies in the medicine field, she decided she doesn't want to do anything. You know, like she went to the best school, she went to the best university, she, she did the whole thing. And then she, she said no, and she became a mom and she had two kids. And, and since then, that's it. Like, that's all she is, you know, and her, her, her oldest daughter is now, I don't know, 20. You know? <laughs> and, and I always ask her, I don't see her a lot because she's, she, you know, I don't meet her a lot, but you know, every, few years i'm like you don't want to do something <laughs> she says no no she says i'm fine like this is my this is what what this is me this is my life I'm, you know i'm taking care of my kids and my parents and my husband and my home and my this and my that and i'm no i have absolutely no ambition i was 
I, I was judging, judging that for, for some time, <laughs> I have to say. Mm. But when she said it to me like this, when she showed me how much permission she's giving herself, like she's not frustrated that she's not writing a book, you know, like she didn't start off as a stay home mom. You know, she started as a professional. And then the minute she got all her diplomas, she just hung them and decided I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing this. You know, I don't want to do this. So I guess she went through all this route because of, you know, her parents, society, you know, they were expecting her to, to go through all that. But then she actually, you know, took the seat. And now I have much bigger um, appreciation for where she is. Like I, I stopped judging her. When she said it to me in these words, I had a closure, mm. you know, of how uh, she accepts herself of not creating like, like I want to create. Okay. I'm not, you know, there's no, also, you know, some people look at me and they're like, well, you, you haven't made a million dollar yet, you know? <laughs> there's horses for courses and everybody has their right everybody's just doing what makes sense to them but what i see yeah. time again is is it doesn't matter what you're up to the experience doesn't come from what you're doing it comes from where you're coming from so oh say something about that say i want to hear about that say something about that so you can you can be ambitious and you can want to create projects, but if you're constantly doing that in a state of stress, um, frustration, upset, um, and think that all of those feelings are saying something about you and your projects and and the future of them, then your experience of those things isn't probably going to be all that joyful. But then you can also... Um, do all of those things in a state of joy, not all the time necessarily, because we are yeah. and we go in and out of it. But the the general consensus would be that when you part from that place and you're in the present moment more of the time, your experience of what you're up to is more beautiful. It's more rich. There's a depth to it that wasn't there before. Absolutely. So once again, your your experience of motherhood can shift at any moment because you can actually come back to the present moment. Because the only thing that's ever going on is we're either in the present moment or we're in completely in la-la land creating all of these stories or in the future or in the past or creating projects in our heads. We're not here in this moment. There's a beautiful, let's see if I can find it. There was a beautiful quote. Well, it's not even a quote, actually. It's something that I heard that then got written down and then I use for one of my events. I want to see if I can find it. And it talks about this very thing. You know, I think there's not one, um, this kind of reminders, like you need to get them so many times. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you wouldn't believe. I'm actually, it's interesting because I I think I actually brought myself to be surrounded by these reminders and it's like still not enough. Well, we always have the capacity to see more. We're going to be having insights until the day we die. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, we, we can always see the same thing more deeply mm-hmm. every time. And I'm always seeing new things and I'm always hoodwinked by the same thing. It's just thought doing its job. It's really the illusionary nature of life is really quite amazing. And so it goes something like this. Um, we find that moment when we just observe what's happening without judgment and without analysis, without trying to get anything out of it. Sid Banks speaks of this feeling as a state of grace, where you're just looking at it, you're just observing it. That neutral place is the best thing Sid knew in terms of having that feeling come back. Anything other than that neutrality, that state of grace, when we are down, just means that we're back to searching again. And searching is a state of mind. Searching is a mental activity that is saying, I don't have what I need. My true self isn't enough. The fact is, the spiritual fact is that any time we have a moment when the world stops, we have everything we could possibly, possibly need. We're home. When thinking comes back in, guess what? We're somewhere else. But that state of grace, that willingness to go in and out of separate realities with grace, not judge yourself, not judge the world and just notice. To me, it's just the pathway to freedom. It's the pathway to not being gripped by the movie. Going in and out of separate realities of grace allows for more of a continuum of gratitude because you see... Overall, you're going, you're going to be going in and out of separate realities with more and more understanding. Who wrote that? So one of my mentors called Chip Tipman, he was on a recording and somebody transcribed it. And mm-hmm. I really loved it because it just, 
it just brings it back to that is when we are in the present moment, there is nothing that we need. And we're all, we, the only thing that we're ever searching for is ourselves. The very thing that created us in the first place. And that's yeah. kind of where you started out. What creates you, what you create creates you, right? Oh, totally. I'm, I'm all the time. I'm all about go, going home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all I want to do all day long is go home. Is go home. Be home. Yeah, that's yeah. that's my thing. That's my why. Honestly, this is like what Brune Brown. She had something, and she said something, something about belonging truly to yourself. Um, it's my turn to. I, w- I want to pull it like you know exactly. So when you and remember, I spent so much time, you know, trying to find my why. You know, because you have to find your why. You have to find your why to be happy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think that that isn't, is, is, I don't know. I, for me personally, <sighs> like my why changes from month to month. <laughs> is it, you, okay. But when you understand there is a lot of uh, resistance to, to say that, that you, you don't need your, I was also like, I don't know what's my why. I don't know what's my why. It just means that there's another reason to search no. because you can have happiness without knowing what your why is. You know what? I also think that you don't need a why to cre- to create. No, you don't. You know, all these, uh, I'll call it's them It's made gurus. up anyway. You, you know, what, uh, what is your course? Like you want to do a book. Okay. What is your why? Why are you writing this book? I don't know. Why are you doing this program? I don't know. What's the why for your retreat? I don't know. What's the why for your business? And then some people come and tell you, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm a single mom and I want my kid to thrive. So that's my why. Or I want to help uh, people, you know, in Africa have water. That's my big why, you know. And it's, in, and it's interesting to know it. I think, I think there's, a, there's, there's, it's, it's an interesting to notice why you want to do something. But for me, the sense of needing to know your why to be happy I just don't, I just don't prescribe to that because you can be happy regardless of knowing your why. And happiness is not linked to knowing your why. If it was, babies wouldn't be happy. You know, it's interesting. My mom, what she always wanted from me was to be happy. I'm never trying to be happy. It's it's interesting. I I want to create, but but that makes me happy. Hmm. You know, that's the tool. Anyway, so she's, Brunei Brown says that belonging so fully to yourself Mm. If you're willing to stand alone is, is a wilderness, an untamed, unpredictable place of solitude and searching. Mm. But, you know, to belong so fully to yourself. Has, has today been useful? Yes, it was really interesting. I, I'm not going to say it's not what I expected because I didn't expect anything specific. Yeah, there were some things. I think the whole weather thing, this thing about, yeah, sometimes it's not about how things are, but it's how you interpret them or what way you put on them, right? Mm. Like it's how you react to them mm. and how you want to. I think that was a good framing for me. Like another way of thinking about it that was very clear, very insightful. Mm. And besides that, I think we talked about a lot of things that were uh, very good reminders. And, um, you know, and there's one thing I always say, like, when I look at books, I see which books I want to buy first and read first. And they're all books about um, creative stuff. <laughs> I'm like, so, so like I could have written this book. So why am I, why is that the book I want to read? Why not read other books that I could not have written? You know, like they would tell me things I I don't know, or I, I've never heard of. They will teach you new things. Why do I always gravitate to the same topics that I know most about? And I, I'm, you know, wh- why is that one I want to read more of this? So I realized that, you know, as creatives, what we need and want the most is to be reminded that we're creatives. So, so this whole thing, you know, so you're, you know, you know, the kindness of the creative process and to be more in the flow, these are very important reminders for me. They're not, they're not the new thing, but the, I need that reminder every day to, to seriously. What so, will be interesting is Monica is um, to let me know what happens after the call, because what I've seen is that once we've had these conversations most of the ladies, if not every, actually every single one of them actually have totally got into action. Oh, for sure. <laughs> 
Now, who knows what my action will be? be interesting Netflix? To see, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I'd love to know. I'll touch base with you in about two weeks to see what's up. Okay. Okay. You got it. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Marina. It was really a, a, such a pleasure talking with you. I, I absolutely you. loved our conversation and I'm very grateful for all the insights and just the connection alone itself. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a lot to percolate without, it's not a goal. It's not a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I will let them come in and out whenever they want. Well, I'm sitting you know, there's, the nothing, there's nothing wrong with goal setting that, that, you know, that we can all set goals. That's not the problem. The problem is when we think the goal can give us a feeling or, or we've got a lot riding on it because we think that if we make that goal, then it will give us a feeling of this, but, but it can't set goals do if that makes sense to you absolutely but but that's the thing is a lot of the time we we set these goals and beat ourselves up because we didn't we didn't create them and then we're upset because we're not in the feeling we thought it would give us yeah because what you create creates you so if you create that goal <laughs> then that's what you get right yeah so wonderful well, i think so much monica it was beautiful absolutely to marina we'll absolutely soon. okay all right <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> And there we have it, another incredible episode of The Joy of Being. And remember, if you'd like to come on the show to get clarity and flow in an area of your life that you feel stuck in, please email me at marina at marinapearson.com, sharing what you would love to get insights on. And remember, you can find me on Instagram at Marina Pearson or my Facebook group, The Joy of Being. So until next week's episode, remember, you are the joy you seek. <laughs>